Hello and welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer Podcast. We are on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, and SoundCloud. And if you're listening to us on iTunes right now, go ahead and leave a five-star review. Here's a review from E4 Corporal 0311. The subject of the review is Baptism of Joy. Insightful and immersive interviews with a wide variety of peoples. Thank you, E. E Corporal, E4 Corporal, 0311. Happy Friday, guys. Very excited to announce I will be performing with Comedians of the Compound this Saturday, tomorrow uh, in Lakewood, New Jersey. We'll be at the Blue Claw Stadium. Uh, It's going to be, I think, one of the last outdoor shows of the season before things get cold. So go to compoundcomedy.com to get tickets. And then if you can't make that one, I'll be headlining in Morris Plains Saturday, November 6th at the Dojo of Comedy, also known as Tiff's Ale House. And that's in Morris Plains, New Jersey. For tickets to that, go to my website, chrissymayer.com. Got tons more shows coming up, hopefully a few more before the end of the year. And then I'll be with Queens of the Compound in Albany end of January. Um, it'll be on Long Island end of February. Then we'll be hitting up Miami in March and then back to Austin in May. So I'll be scheduling in a few more dates here and there. Just trying to do what I can, you know, perform at all the great places that don't mandate vaccines. You know, just being a hero. No big deal. (sighs) We all know dating apps are terrible. They're superficial. You're swiping at faces. You don't even know. I was just talking to my girlfriend today. She she met this guy in the chat of one of my episodes. And like within a few texts, he had already revealed himself to be a psycho. So I get it. D- trying to, you know, find somebody and click with them online is super hard. Uh, and the solution here is a values based matching system. If you're conservative, things probably aren't going to work out with someone who's a total lefty. Same with religion, lifestyle, how to raise your kids and other core values. Sure, somebody could change. But why not just find the perfect match from the start? Drome is a new free, keyword free, values-based dating app. You pick the deal breakers and deal makers. There are no experts and match percentages. You don't have to addictively check the app. As soon as someone matches your deal breakers and deal makers and you match theirs, you get a notification. Drome is also video only for more human interaction. So go to drome.date slash CMP in your phone's browser. Click the iOS or Google button to install and then use the invite code CMP to sign up. I'm going to bring it up on the screen here. Boom. If you're already matched up, tell your friends, tell your partner to tell their friends. That's drom.date slash CMP. Design and meet your perfect match. It's free to use. You got nothing to lose. Why not? Don't get, don't get. Don't be meeting weird. Don't settle for weirdos. I know we're all a little desperate and horny. Anyway, speaking of desperate and horny, uh, this next guest is, uh, I think, my favorite cartoonist right now. And you're probably like, Christy, you've never even talked about cartoonists. You, are you pulling this out of your ass? No. I genuinely love this guy's work. You may have seen his work uh, on the set of Tim Cast IRL. You may have seen his work... Uh, on my, on my social media because I tend to share it here and there. Uh, so happy to have him on the pod today, uh, George Alexopoulos, also known as G Prime eighty five. I'm oh, so glad you? I was muted. You made me scream just now. I made you scream. Speaking of desperate and horny, <laughs> <laughs> I don't draw that much. Uh, <laughs> not safe for work stuff, you know. No, and you know, I just I always <laughs> enjoy a funny. segue. You got to have a segue and no, do not take that personally. You are not coming off desperate or horny. You made me laugh. It was very good. Okay, good. (laughs) You're like, no, you're actually right. (laughs) You hit the nail on the head. Um, Cool. I love it. Like sometimes, sometimes there are guests that like I reach out to. Sometimes there are guests that reach out to me. And like, usually it's like one of the parties doesn't know who the other is. But in the case of you, George, like I had been following your work uh, ever since I had done Timcast, which was like back in March. No, not to brag, but I was on Timcast. Thank you very much. Uh, And before I did the show, my whole Instagram was deleted. All 13,000. Because you were on Timcast? No, because I had posted something anti-yab, anti-yib-yab in my stories. So... I don't know. It it wasn't all that bad, but you, right. we I know Instagram how is. Oh, of course. I got dinged once and I was, 
<laughs> I was like lighting everything on fire. I was like, this is the end. I was going to say everything. Like I have a bucket list of things I want to say if I know that I'm being canceled. All right. I have 30 minutes to say everything. You do? Like, you have like yeah, your I, final I FUs? Yeah. And then my farewells to everyone. I hope I'll see you on the other side kind of thing. That's how it feels, doesn't it? Isn't that sad that that's how important and crucial our social media accounts have become? (sighs) Yeah, I think the solution is going to be spreading it out as far as it can go so that no one platform has our balls in their hand, you know? You know, Um, but people have made a case that that is bad, the spreading out uh, so that the balls are not in one hand. But that is people have said that the more apps and platforms there are, the more fragmented we are, the less, uh, you know, the less powerful our voices are because our fans, you know, we all, we all were there. We saw what happened to, uh, God, what was that one? Not uh, parlor. We all saw what happened to parlor. That was going to be the next big thing. Mm -hmm. And it was annihilated and it fractured a lot. But I, I always like to be hopeful. I've seen, um, there's this Twitter, Twitter has, you know, has this new function on it where it's trying to be like clubhouse where you can just like, you know, jump in and like listen to a, which is kind of nice. It's like, I think it's like low impact. I always listen to that after I'm done recording my podcast, I'll go into like Hotep Jesus. He'll usually have one like late at night and I'll jump in, uh, and listen. So I think, I think there are communities that are building, and it's just kind of up to us, you know, to kind of like find our people. I hate saying find your tribe. Like it makes me sound like one of those cringy live, laugh, love chicks. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to also believe that uh, we can make content for anybody pretty much on any platform. And I don't like to think of uh, uh, tribes and us and them and stuff. Like I'll say I'm a conservative, but <clears throat> even to conservatives, like I'd be really embarrassed if my church friends uh, saw half my stuff. Um, you know, so, but I think artsy entertainment people, I don't know if you'll agree with this. I've always been outside of, I don't like being categorized anyway. Um, and I like to just float between groups and meet as many people as I can. And, um, were you like that in high school? Like you were, were you not a cool kid nor a loser? You were like in the middle? Yeah, it's weird. I was going to say, um, it's weird how life's uh, epochs, whatever, like the a few years, every few years, the cycle continues of like, I feel a lot of what's going on on uh, social media is just high school again. And I'm fitting the same role as I did back then, too. Like, I wanted to be everyone's friend in the early years. I wanted to meet people. I was very shy. And I am very shy. Um, but I used like my artsy fartsy techniques of, like, Oh, Hey, I drew a comic. Can I sit with you guys at this lunch table? And some cool people let me sit at the lunch table, you know? Uh, but by senior year, all of my friends had either moved, uh, or something like that. And where did you grow right, up? Jersey, uh, North Jersey. Yeah. Okay. That's, uh, yeah, I would say, yeah, North Jersey is fair. I'm from Long Island. So we're probably like <clears throat> pretty, pretty similar. I would element. guess. Yeah, wise. culturally, we're the suburbs of Long Island. <clears throat> no, it's true. Or lack of accents, cultural. <laughs> like I say, talk. You know, do you not talk? Talk, talk. Yeah, but we, if I'm like, it depends. It depends, like how <laughs> angry I am, how drunk yeah. I am. Then it does mm-hmm. come out. Yeah, it's so I'm sure Long Island and where I grew up, North Jersey, let's say, is they're kind of mirror images, and then of course uh, Manhattan's right in the middle and all that. Uh, But I'm very suburban. I don't actually like even, well, especially now I don't like going to the city. But even back in the day, I used to commute for school and stuff. Were you like a bridge and tunnel person like in high school and college? Because your mustache tells me that you were, but. (laughs) The trashy mustache. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'm just imagining your hair a little bit more gelled up. and No, I used to gel my hair and stuff. This facial hair is because I've. You know, it's just I needed something to give me a little edge above the competition, right? (laughs) You needed something. I grew it in my late 20s and I never shaved it since. I like it. You look a little bit like a comic book villain. Oh, yeah. You know, I I can twirl it when I'm pissed off, you know, but uh, the real move when you're pissed off is this. You seen that one? Oh, really? Why? Because you're prepping your face for a fight? I can't believe he said that. You know, like that. But anyway, yeah, uh, Bridge and Tunnels. Uh, I used to commute all the time. Uh, I used to cut high school, actually, and go to like Midtown Comics. Oh, uh, wow. Forty uh, 42nd Street or something like that. Yeah, of course. Uh, and then I went to school briefly uh, in downtown Manhattan. Um, but long story short, I, I love visiting the city. 
uh, not so much these days. The last time I visited, I went to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and then they did the mandate uh, card thing. And I'm not vaccinated, and I'm not going to be. Pure so. blood. Woo! <laughs> I don't know. I have to think of. We have to think of a, a symbol yes, to do. X symbol. Yeah. yeah. As in stay the hell. It's like away no from means me. no. Right. Yeah. Like I want to wear a sign just or saying like, stay. Pure blood. It's like, okay for you to not go near me. Everyone on the street. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's we could talk about that as much as you want. But um, I guess yeah, I have to like, be careful because wasn't pure blood also something the Nazis said, like <laughs> I'm about sure. the Aryan and race, Harry Potter, and yeah. stuff, right? I'm Whatever, I'm no mud blood. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not I'm not taking that uh, gender enhancing. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. no, really, it's just a principle thing. I look at the percentages and numbers of like what are the chances of someone like me getting seriously sick i'm overweight but i'm relatively young so i'm still in the 99 point whatever percentage and... you don't look it like your head looks you don't have like a fat head do you know well, what i mean it, sometimes you, know, you can tell from like you know it's usually a girl's <laughs> profile picture or like a tiktok you're like oh they're they have a once you see a fat neck and head you're like i don't need to see like anymore that. i could show yeah. my man tits uh, <laughs> It's right here. The camera's right here on purpose. I'm not going to ask you to pan down. We just met. <laughs> Should I show my tits? Um, <laughs> well, in the photo you I'll gave me you. to use for the graphic, I was, yeah, yeah, you're like, was, this is a good photo of me. I'm like, first of all, it's a cartoon. And second of all, you've drawn yourself with man tits. But you see the joke. I have to make myself laugh. I was scrolling YouTube yesterday, eating dinner, and I saw the picture. I'm like, what? I actually, She actually did it? And it, no, it's perfect. We have to use it's it. It's funny. It's yeah, very the you. Goal is to get that shock, you know, laughter. It, it does he really look like that? And of course, I love the caption. <laughs> I think it was, "I wish women wouldn't always catcall me." And it's like I love the joke of the ugly fat guy. And as I'm walking down the street, that's something. <clears throat> I'm sorry, that didn't actually happen to me, but it it was funny to me. I think there was in the news of uh, some woman was saying like. Uh, why are men always cat calling me? You know, I'm like, why doesn't that ever happen to me? That's sexist. Yeah. So I don't, I don't like that women don't cat call me, but when they do, I'm offended. I'm upset. Like, I feel like all the best cat callers in the city, like either lost their jobs or moved away. Cause I'm not, I'm not hearing what I should be hearing, but then again, I'm not going in as much. I just go in once a week. I don't know. We've got to step up our game and really tempt our uh, would be uh, pursuers. Yeah, maybe How I need to I just go buy you? a. I have to go buy like a tight winter coat or something and step it up. I mean, I walk around with my shirt on, a uh, shirt off, and all I get is arrested <laughs> most of the time. Oh my god, there's a dog biting my feet. <laughs> Waffles, Waffles is biting my feet. All right, sure, I'll show her. Come here, you. Come here, oh, you. Get your cutest baby. Got her. Okay, at first, Waffles, I think, is suffering a bit of an identity crisis because at first she was named Brandy and then and then she was named Waffles. So she had two different, like, necklaces going on. Oh, she's sniffing the mic. Thank she's you. gonna do a little ASMR. Oh, okay. Oh, no. All right, no means no. Poor thing. She's like a little furry meatball. What? Oh, oh, oh no. Okay, down, down you go. Before the... Before the animal people call me, she's great. The point is, that, I'm sorry. <laughs> getting so off topic. Did you go to an art school in the city? Yeah, I went for a year and then I uh, dropped out. It wasn't for me. What I couldn't art afford was it. it. School of Visual Arts. It's oh, like, SVA. Yeah, that's yes. like the that's like the art school in the city. Yeah, at the time it was. I th this would have been early 2000s. So uh, we didn't know a lot about art schools in my <clears throat> like my guidance counselor or whatever was like, oh, you want to be an artist, huh? Well, I don't know anything about that. So here's the name of like two schools in the whole country. Uh, so it was either that or some other school I'd never heard of or some other school. I wanted to make video games too in Washington, but there was no way I could move out there. But ironically, I had a friend who went to that school and then ended up working for the people who make Grand Theft Auto. And he's like a uh, ultra millionaire now. You said so, LARPing? LARPing? Uh, Grand Theft Auto? Wait, you were, wait, you, did you say you were LARPing for Grand Theft Auto? No, he went to work for Rockstar oh. Games, I meant. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, but yeah, long story short is <clears throat> I had very few options because mo like in my, I'm the only artist in my family and nobody really knew what to do with this career-wise. 
So I went to SVA for a year thinking, okay, I'm going to learn some cartooning. And by the end of the year, I'm like, wait, I can just teach myself and not have to go through this curriculum and be tens of thousands in the hole. And really the only reason you would go to an art school like that is to build connections. Mm. And by the time I would have graduated, I had uh, started making graphic novels anyway. There was a company called Tokyo Pop who was making like American manga. And uh, so I broke into the industry, but then they went out of business because of the recession in 2007 and eight. Uh, so then I just ended up working in the printing industry for the longest time and self-publishing my comics. Wow. I wonder if you feel like your industry and like, I feel like your industry and comedy are so similar in that nobody gives you a roadmap. There's no like, all right, here, here's what you have to do. And, and, and here's a path. And this is how you can have a career as a cartoonist or a comic. It's like, you really just have to like bang around and figure it out. Like you were even in school for it and you didn't feel like you were getting the tools you needed. Yeah. It's funny. I, I, I love uh, reading about the lives of com stand-up comedians and stuff, and I always draw the parallel of uh, as soon as someone finds a way to break in, let's say, <clears throat> or, or get up the mountain, so many people, so many people rush to fill that hole that it gets congested, and then you can't use that path again. Someone else has to discover some other way. So, like in, in indie comics, there were so many times where I kind of maybe could have made it if conditions were different. And then something went wrong with the publisher or I pissed off the wrong people or uh, there was a million different reasons, or maybe I sucked. I, there was no way to know. Um, and then a couple of years ago, I had like crazy uh, drama happen to me online. And then through just uh, f several. What do you mean like someone trying to cancel you or something? Yeah. There was this whole Reddit story. Uh, I don't, I mean, I told the story a million times, so I don't, I don't want to be a, dummy and keep repeating it i feel bad but i've never even heard of you having read a drama so <laughs> oh, maybe oh, i mentioned just... it briefly on a tim's show or something but long story short is i pissed off reddit um i had drawn a bunch of comics that were really popular and they had upvoted it to like the front page uh i don't know if you know how reddit works do you know how reddit works oh. yeah i i hear about i know what's down with what's up with reddit there's upvoting okay. downvoting yeah, so you could downvote something and it'll basically vanish. But all the upvotes and you get coins or whatever, and it gets promoted, promoted until you reach the front page. So a comic I did reach the front page, um, and they hadn't heard of me. And then they went to my Twitter and found out that I like follow conservatives and stuff. I had like 200 followers on Twitter at the time. This would have been like three years ago. Wow. Um, yeah, so the whole website, and I mean the whole website of Reddit, was like, oh, we accidentally uploaded a Nazi, which I'm not. What? Yeah, and so they're like, oh, he follows X, Y, and Z. They're scrutinizing everything I ever posted. I couldn't even respond on Reddit. Like I was trying to defend myself like an idiot. I didn't know the rules at the time. Do you and, uh, remember what comic mm -hmm. it was that yeah, was blown up? Um, yeah, I could show it to you. Um, was it, it was... black and white with the ghost? Because I'm trying to look it up. No, it was... Um, See, I could tell you how to look it up, but it might take too long. If you go to Reddit slash users G prime 85, I stopped posting after this, but um, it was one where there was a famous com uh, comic artist who was being skewered to death by the, um, by the Reddit comics community. And I was criticizing them by saying, this is what you do to your creators. You build them up to be your king and then you murder them. And the joke was, Hey, here's our new king. It's George. And then they say, hey, come sit on your throne, and it's his body. And basically the joke is we're, we're going to do the same thing to you. And, Whoa. and this... not to toot my own horn too much. Toot it. They did the same goddamn thing to me the next day. I told them they were going to do it, and they did it. And so I was canceled off of Reddit, and I was like, oh, shit, my career's – I curse. I'm so sorry. I, I know you've Curse cursed away. Them. I'm trying so hard to find this comic. Maybe I'm retarded. Um, but, uh... it's... How do I even look it up? Uh, I think if you go to my Instagram, da, 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 I don't want to waste your time. No, you're here to waste my time. <laughs> it's, it's on my phone. I do nothing but waste women's time. I oh, stop it. And then uh, you no, say that and then we go, I'm being no, sorry. we I'm love being sorry. you. All right. I'm on your IG. Should I squirrel to the bottom? Uh, probably it's near the bottom. I don't know if I even uploaded it. It was a long time ago. 
this sound what you're describing sounds like a comics gate thing uh yeah actually i don't know how much you want to get into it but uh it was comics gate that was the community who were kind enough at the time to uh how do i put it take you in. they were the only ones willing to listen to my story but then all this shit happened with me in comics and i decided not to talk to them anymore too Oh, so that, really? It was, it was terrible. Like, oh. they really, they were really cool people, but there were a few bad actors. I don't want to get too into it, I guess. Okay. Because I've had a couple were... people on the show who've who've talked about Comics Gate, so yeah. I, I know a little bit about it. Basically, like they're they're this group of people who are against comics, like getting woke and getting away from their true true like yeah. stories and lore and right and being canceled, being fired from DC right. or. Yeah, on paper, it's it's an amazing idea. I I really liked that a lot of them before all this Reddit stuff happened to me, and they were really cool for a little while. But uh, what happened with them was pretty much they had a few people who were r- behaving really in a way that I thought was super unprofessional. And the comics gay people. Yeah, just a small fraction of them. Yeah. But, um, the community wasn't willing to call them out on it. Long story short, and. Um, Oh, because it was like, oh, they're still part of the group. So even if they're a little out of line. Yeah. And so I was fighting with them about like, hey, we shouldn't, we, as if I was one of them, like we shouldn't be cool with this. But they, I fought with too many people and I just decided, you know what, I'm better off just being me. And if they want to follow me, cool. Uh, If they want to call me names, you know, what am I, I'm not going to stop them. So why do you feel like they came after you? You seem like such a cool nice no, guy and you're I, I definitely kicked that hornet's nest and i think i have a pattern of that uh so it's probably my fault i criticized one of their leaders basically um and i i called him names and i said you know hey you're you you have the power to stop this misbehavior and you're not and uh it was it was just a clusterfuck um so i don't talk to their leadership but uh, i also i don't pick fights with them anymore i don't see the reason i don't see the point um but looking, in general, looking back, would you have handled it a little differently now? Uh, it's hard to say because I still am not cool with the behavior that I objected to initially. Um, you don't have and, to out who it was or what or like, but like, what was the behavior that you had a problem with that you thought was out of line? Uh, let's say going too hard against critics. OK, um, so people who are criticizing creators and i've been criticized many times and people have gone on blast on me many times and it's been hard you know it's hard when thousands of people are coming after you yeah oh Um, yeah i know that really the only thing you can do is just take it and just not try not to let it get to you because eventually they'll get bored and move on um but the policy for a lot of uh people at the time was just hey let's go after them as hard as they're going after us and i didn't think that was professional Hmm. And it, it was not a good long-term strategy because we wanted to be the people, I, I don't mean we as if I was a part of a team or anything, but I want my profession to be in this, like, as much as I piss people off, I also don't want them to really hate me, to, if that makes sense. Like, you can get mad at a comic I drew, um, people call me like racist or something, but if you actually read the comics uh, as m- multiple, like, dozens or hundreds of them in a row you'll see like no he's he's very fair i hope in, in like i criticize everyone as equally as possible um there have certain personal beliefs that maybe get accidentally drawn into this comic but like in general i want as many people any reasonable person let's say to read my stuff and say if i don't like this or that one i still like this other hundred and something or hundreds of comic strips like i've drawn many thousands of pages or something like if you don't like this perhaps you'll like this book and so that's what i want to try to do with my career Uh, i understand that i you know poke fun at the left specifically the far left a lot because they make it so easy (laughs) well they remind me of the far right to be honest and i grew up in a religious background as well where they are very uh I used I used to use the term legalistic or moralistic, where it's like if you don't if you're not one of us, you know you're degenerate. You're not part of our club, and it's like I don't even want to be part of your club. I just want to draw my comics and make people smile. You know. Uh, yeah. So it sounds like you really don't want to get up and wrapped up in identity politics. Like I very much can understand your side, and I I can kind of understand like the comics gate side too because we've been hearing from like 
God, a couple of years now, like you can't, you know, the right or conservatives have been known for like being polite and being the bigger person and being the better person. And then there's been this conversation going on like, well, yeah, not that you have to stoop to their level, but you can't fight fair because the left doesn't isn't fighting fair. Uh, but I, I, I feel where you're at. Like you just you don't want to get wrapped up in the drama. You just want to do good work um, at the same well, time. Possible. You don't want people to hate you. A lot of the strategy for, let's say, mid-level creators or low-level creators like myself used to be like, hey, stir up drama, create heat, uh, and that'll help you sell books. But then I was noticing that some people were generating fights to sell books, not saying, hey, I'm being actually attacked. Instead I know like, so many comedians who do that. They freaking you know the create strategy, drama to get people to listen to their podcast. Look like you're being attacked, but you're actually the one that threw the first rock. Yes, you know? yes, I know so many people like that. It's really dirty to me. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to judge too much, but when I see people judge. making judge hundreds away. of no, what kills me is I see like a hundred thousand dollars are going to this or that creator uh, because they were able to consistently pick fights with their own peers. Hmm. There didn't need to be a fight here, but why are you fighting with this guy? And then two months later, they're friends again. And then they're appearing on each other's live streams and they're spending more time live streaming than actually making comics. And I got really pissed off. I'm like, you guys are not professional. You're not selling a book. Like I want to make comics. My, my business is changing over the past few years, but I really do want to make books, comic books. Um, I don't want to fight with people online. I don't want to be on YouTube all day talking shit. Um, I, I really want to make the comics industry healthy again, if that was ever possible. And the only way you can do that is to make good books. Um, anyway, it's 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 a real, uh, it's like a black hole. But I, I really respect creators who just make good books. And uh, occasionally, in my case, like I'll make my comic strips now, I'm mostly making comic strips, but those are provocative. But political comic strips are very it's a very different beast than making comic books uh, so it's like i'm doing two different businesses at once so it's kind of ugly on my end too uh, not to talk too much i'm sorry you are talking the perfect amount and i totally feel you on like what you're describing is kind of it sounds like grifting where someone uh, a person seems to be more wrapped up in drama or marketing or like pushing their brand or their whatever rather than like the art than like doing the thing and unfortunately like we're all online we all have like platforms and stuff like we all have something to sell so to speak so i sometimes you know i know that feeling of like oh why don't you just focus on getting better why don't you just like but like everyone's different and it is frustrating when you see somebody who you think is less talented than you or like less deserving than you i can think of so many examples right now just in comedy alone like get ahead or blow up or whatever when really it's like oh she's just hot and takes a lot of pictures of her ass and butthole and like and that raises is, a serious yeah. moral question though is like am i an asshole for not doing that like because it kills me like i could be making so much more money if i just draw uh nude stuff all the time now Draw some but nudes. I'm, draw draw even, me nude. <laughs> like I wouldn't draw I wouldn't judge myself for doing that. But like I'm trying to think like what's the long term implication if I started doing that? Like what's my current audience gonna think? I also like I've made children's books, for instance. How is that gonna affect things in the long term? I I want to have as many options open as possible, but I also like it kills me to think like, wow, I'm I'm actually just leaving me on the table. I get requests all the time of like Oh, that's a really hot character. Draw, draw her naked or something. It's like wow. I could, I could, but what what happened long term? I don't, I don't actually know. Um, so I'm sure it's the same in in the comedy scene as well. It's, you got the hot babe tell us the jokes and whatnot, but mm -hmm. what is the product that we're selling exactly? Are we just making people happy? Are we trying to make them laugh? What is a comedy show anyway? You know. Oh, did I lose you by accident? I think you disconnected. If you can hear me, I think we disconnected by accident. You were saying? <laughs> yep. We're still good? We're Maybe still it was a sign I should stop talking about. Here, just keep talking. You're doing great. Uh, I forgot what I was saying. Uh, um, I... So I think not to be someone not. who's not to be someone who's constantly quoting Jordan Peterson, but it is that is who I'm I turning into. 
So he's just like, you have to take it each step of the way. Every time you question yourself, like, oh, should I be doing this and that? Like, you have to go by how you feel. And you're obviously not. And I think the people that just start and create drama, like maybe it's conscious, maybe it's not. And that's just not your way. The The key to, to getting ahead in and of any of these sort of like creative industries or really anything I think is consistency. And I think you've been pretty consistent and I don't know how long you've been putting your art out there, but you know, you, I mean, when I walked into the, the studio at Timcast, I thought it was just that one that was behind like one person, the whole like freaking, there was so much of your art everywhere. I was blown away. It was like really cool. So Thanks. that's what it's all about is just like, you have no idea who who's noticing you. You have no idea who's a fan of you and just keep doing what you're doing. And you're no one is doing what you're doing. Not that I've seen. So I don't think you there, need drama or fights or like an extra whatever grift to get noticed. Well, I definitely agree with the second point of uh, I don't need to do dirty stuff. Um, actually, I think it works against me. Like it's not my personality to pick fights or be aggressive or even to like roast people. I don't like doing that. And I don't really like being roasted. Like if people, you know, they could say I got a big head or I got a big nose or something. I'd be like, ah, you're being a jerk face. You know, I'm not going to like pick on them. But, uh, the other point was um, a, an important one of uh, are, there aren't many, let's say conservative comics creators. There are some, uh, there's a Ben Garris, for instance, that I'd love to talk to him sometime. And then there's uh, another infamous guy named Stone Toss, uh, whose uh, name is work Stone Toss. Yeah, he's working behind a, a pseudonym. He's way he generates way more heat than I do. Um, but because he uses his pseudonym, he can do punchlines that are uh, super provocative. Um, but the the big question is how many more uh there's also like little chad uh, there's a couple of strips trying to I love you know, little chad. push through yeah it's mm -hmm. cute um and back in the day you know there was newspaper comics but our stuff would never have flown uh, on the newspaper strips anyways and newspapers kind of died out anyway and it's been replaced by social media anyways so back in the day you would have to go through a syndicate and editors and they would really neuter your stuff but now i can just go directly to my readers anyway cut out the middlemen so th this emerging business is strange and very fragile because i feel like i can be like let's say i do all my business through etsy and patreon right now and if they decided to kick me off those platforms it's like well i guess now i have to find i don't know locals dave rubin's site or yeah i hear tim casts you know they're doing something over there it's there'll be probably a few months or years of no business coming in, even though people might read my stuff still. So it's, it's the hardest part is trying to turn this into an actual full-time job. Um, and I still don't have the answer to that one. Um, yeah. But it's the weirdest part is I wanted to do books, like actual books with real art. Like you're, start, you're cycling past like the, I'm actually trying art. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> like the These black, are beautiful. That, the black and white one I'm super proud of. It's a book called Bad Dreams that I this wish one? I had more time for. Yeah. Um, wow. There's a couple of really, uh, I'm really, I'm not often proud of my stuff, but that book uh, came out so good. And it's wow. supposed to be a four part mini series, but I only drew the one uh, issue so far. Um, but anyway, those books don't tend to sell as much. Uh, they're not as, let's say, viral. They don't mm -hmm. have viral potential as much as like a strip. Uh, so the the hardest part, and I'm sure you can agree uh, with comedy, is the things that we want to do the most uh, are also the things that are the least popular. And then mm. the things that we don't try on, like that strip right there, I maybe spent a couple of hours on it. It was kind of an afterthought, but that got a lot of attention. And I'm like, oh, am I being stupid by not making more of these? And now this is pretty mm -hmm. much what I do most of the time. Yeah, that's always a struggle of an of an artist. Like in a comic too, is there's jokes that the crowd loves, and then there's jokes that that you love, and sometimes those <laughs> overlap. And yeah. and that's the struggle, right? It's like if you only do, uh, if you only give the people what they want, are you going to start feeling like hollow? Are you going to start feeling like, eh, well, it's not about what I want anymore? But at the same time, you have to make a living, and you do have to notice what is popular. Yeah. Because a lot of art comes from emotions and you can't, 
I can't make myself feel gregarious and happy all the time. So I can't like do stand up. Let's I can't tell a story. Like Norm Macdonald can tell a story and he's already cracking up. Well, he and used to. No. Yeah. yeah, I know. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Wow. And there's a performance aspect to it mm. where like, I, I just, I put a lot of emotional stuff into these, uh, you know, the black and white comic, for example, it's about uh, what's well, about a lot of things, but, but the, the things that people are responding to these days, especially with strips is uh, fear. Actually, a lot mm. of people are very afraid of so many things and uh, they want the catharsis of not being afraid of those things. So it's yeah. the classic thing of, I'm afraid of this thing. If only I could just laugh at it a little bit, maybe I won't be so scared or something that causes a lot of pain. Like um, in Australia, they shot some dogs or something. Yeah. Uh, they killed some dogs. And I was so pissed off and heartbroken. So I like, I drew a strip kind oh, of, yeah, I gotta find it was that. cutesy. It wasn't funny. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but, I remember it. I'm trying to find it. Uh, it would be at the top probably. Oh my God, you have so much work. <laughs> you know what it is, George, is like, <clears throat> it's the same thing with comedy. It's like a laugh and you're not hearing laughs, right? Because someone's looking at your work and they're not next to you, but like a laugh or like a huh or like anything. It's yeah. it's an acknowledgement of truth. It is, it is yeah. realizing that someone shares the same reality with you, which is like, which is very comforting in the time where like our media, our politicians, everybody wants us feeling like we're alone. We're the only one who's feeling these feelings. Yeah, which is funny because I suspect normal people, however, however I would define that, are, are the majority. They're just too busy with their daily lives to, to be posting like, hey, hey, everyone, listen, I feel really normal right now. No one's going to post that. They only post when they're pissed off or scared, you know? Oh, this is so it kills me. Hello, friend. Great news. Me mates. Oh, this is an Australian dog. Hello, friend. Great news. Me mates and I have been adopted. Our families haven't come for us yet, but I'm sure there's a good reason. I bet they're very excited to meet us. Oh, are you going to take us to them? Dun, dun, dun. Oh, this looks like they all look like the same guy. Every time I see a picture of Australian police, it's always this guy and you captured it really well. <laughs> it's His name is Bruce. I'm sure. Yeah, he looks like a Bruce. <laughs> Ugh. Everyone I've met named Bruce has been like the most horrible person I've met. So yeah. there accurate. was another one with um, when they abandoned those do uh, dogs in uh, Afghanistan too. Oh, is that? Do you know if that's like above or below this uh, one? Let's go above. That was so sad. I, not that I cared more about the dogs than the people, there. but I did feel. Yeah, that one. <laughs> My name's Ghost. My job's to keep everyone safe. It can be tough sometimes, but I'm not scared. Oh my God. Even though I get paid with treats, I do it because I do it for free because I love my friends. I just um don't know where they went. Oh my God. Okay. But you see, we're mess. not laughing. It's not funny, but there's something cathartic about a strip like that. And uh, it's something that I, I tell myself, like if I start one, I'm like, what would I like to read? Yeah. And then it's like, well, no one else is making them right now. So I'll make one. And the only thing the, uh, it's stopping me is like, I don't want to always make strips about how pissed off I am at Joe Biden, for example. Like, I would mm. just do that every day and it would, the magic would be lost. So I have to find other topics to be uh, pissed off about. Like, whatever's in the news, I don't want to always be mad either. Like, I want to wow. laugh sometimes. Uh, do you feel so like sometimes you're like a channeler, not to sound like a gay new age person but do you just feel like the ideas come through you and it's like your job to just express them and then like let the people work it out that would be a fair way i know what you mean uh i i would say like art is a medium so medium in the sense of like say you got a psychic and they're they're the medium between the ghost and you so i'm gonna make a picture and i i compare it like say we've got two brains here my brain your brain and we can't connect them directly so we have game. one and a half brains got it <laughs> <laughs> and so we we can't use a cable like an ethernet cable to just mm -hmm. say hey i have this image in my head i want to share it with you so i have to create something using a medium like art so that's that's where the discipline and uh craftsmanship or craftswomanship comes in uh, you know i'll draw a strip four panels 
Please don't ever say craftswomanship again. <laughs> well, a, I love the amen and a women, so I oh boy, I can drop an idea. Uh, very sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> so it's funny. Yeah, any art uh, channeling mediums and stuff like that is. I'll wake up in the morning and I have to wait to use the shower right now, which turned out to be amazing, because I'll just lie in bed and read the news for like twenty minutes, let's say. And um, so in that 20 minutes, if I see patterns, everyone's talking about right now the shipping containers, for example, mm. and empty store shelves. Yeah. And so I'll just chew on that for like a half hour and I'm in the shower and, you know, all these ideas come in when you're naked, of course. So of I'm course. touching myself, you know, rubbing <laughs> my back. And then I say, Eureka, I have an idea. I'll do a shipping containers joke with the empty store shelves and yada yada punchline. We got a four panel strip today. Uh, sometimes that happens and sometimes it doesn't. And when it doesn't, I work on other things. <laughs> do you ever sometimes there's so many similarities between like, I feel like this and comedy. Do you ever get like half an idea and then it bothers you? Cause you can't like squeeze out what comes before it or after oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And that also happens if someone insults you online and then an hour later you think of the perfect rebuttal, but it's too late. I, I'm, I'm terrible. Like my brain works really slow. another slowly. thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is you who is the jerk. You have to take <laughs> another shower to think of a comeback. Yeah. Right. So I'm just going to always uh, be ready to get naked. That's the secret. I think that's my power. Is that's I how I it. went through my 20s. Yeah. <laughs> I was wise Imagine beyond my Imagine if that years. was actually the power. Like that's <laughs> yeah. the secret of comedy. Uh, but yeah, that happens all the time. Uh, having... Having a half cooked, like I have many scripts and sketched out ideas of like in the four panel plus shape. Uh, I have a few lines of, um, think of an example, a survivalist saying, you know, he's really dark and he's got all these like canned food all over the place and mm -hmm. ammo and stuff. And he's like, you know, when you stare into the abyss, the abyss stares back. And he's saying all this like dark Batman yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's kind of sitting there. And then several panels would go by and he's like, any minute now, society's going to collapse. And I'm that's like, that's great. I feel that way all the time. Yeah. It's funny, but like, I don't know if I could turn that into a four panel strip, you know? So I, I'm sitting on ideas like that all the time where I'm like, how do I condense that? Cause it's same with stand up comedy. I'm sure where, uh, you know, they say brevity is soul of wit, right? So you mm -hmm. have to like subtract and divide and lowest common denominator, cut every word that doesn't need to be there in the joke to get there as fast and as efficiently as possible. Yep. You got to cut the fat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the same with four panel strips or any comic strip at all. Like if you can take any one word out of a dialogue balloon, it'll go that much smoother. Uh, even my color choices uh, are designed to sort of make the, the eye move as fast as possible in a Z shape like instantly, like people will say they're scrolling and they see one of my comics and they know it's mine immediately. Uh, yeah, so, that's pretty cool. Well, it's, it's just like with stand-up comedy. I've noticed uh, a lot of the greats doing the same thing. They'll tell a story. Uh, every word they choose, like Mitch Hedberg, love him. And uh, he's just got this way of delivering uh, where every word matters. And if you took one word out, it wouldn't be nearly as funny. Uh, but comedy and storytelling in general is a lot like that. Is people have less and less time when they're scrolling on Twitter, but you want to get that magic like or a retweet. So you want to make them go, huh? And then okay, I'll hit like, and then they keep going. And they only, like you only have, sorry, sorry, you can finish. Uh, you only have like one second to get their attention, basically. So I was gonna say, is there a lot of pressure on that first frame because of the nature of social media? Um, I think actually it's all four frames uh, condensed into a single plus shape. Because uh, when you're scrolling, you'll see the zoomed out whole comic. Yeah, and, like generally. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I'll intentionally pick colors that pop highly saturated. Like I see your thumbnail there in the top right. Please uh, don't tell says, me it sucks. I can't handle it. No, tell no, me. No, it's fine. great. <laughs> I, I can tell it was professionally shot because it uses color theory, for example. So... Uh, complementary colors, mm. you've got the orange and the red of skin tones, which the opposite color would be like an aqua. So you have your face framed in an aqua color so that your hair and skin color pops as hard as possible. 
So anytime I'm scrolling anywhere, I see that picture and I stop because it's such a, the composition is so uh, uh, well, well tuned, let's say. So a lot of color choice, like my black and white comics didn't do nearly as good as my com color comics. Wow. So I had, to, I had to teach myself color theory. And when I did, I realized it was able, like my content, the content of my comics was always pretty good, I think. But nobody stopped to read because the colors, there was no color. There was nothing to grab you and say, stop scrolling, read this. So once I figured that out, I think my growth, uh, the growth that I wanted started to happen. Plus, it's such a nice um, change of pace from like seeing photos and photos and like, makeup tutorials maybe this is just i'm outing myself right. here but it's like oh like i will always stop for a dog and like a cartoon dog or like a cartoon baby mm -hmm. um it's just that's, it's that's great. social media is what mm -hmm. makes people stop scrolling and to i don't want to sound too crass but really like if someone if a guy's scrolling and they see a hot babe they will stop guaranteed every time even if it's not something they'd be interested in or they're not in the mood they will stop and look their penis tells them to it's not even their fault Right, because what we're, I mean, we're getting into cheesy territory, but like we're not, when we scroll, we're not scrolling with our upper brain. Do you know what I mean? We're, we're looking for images with our lower caveman brain. And w that's why a lot of uh, tweets that just have words don't get any engagement or nearly as much as a tweet with an image. Hmm. And even better is a tweet with a moving image, because that always makes you stop if it's an interesting image. Uh, so really the science, yeah, but that's why a lady has an advantage. I don't begrudge a lady for this, for real, like uh, a pretty woman. Oh, uh, what she have to say about the economic <laughs> crisis. I guess I'll listen to that or like, let's listen to what those tits have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. All right. I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> right. And that's where the upper brain's like, wait a second. Mm -hmm. She's hot, but I don't actually care about this. So I'll keep scrolling now. So you but have she about looks two so seconds. Smart. <laughs> yeah. Right. But if she's hot and smart, I guess like a guy will stop and listen or something. But then his upper, upper brain says, wait a second, I'm, I'm not going to let this woman be smarter than me. I'm going to keep scrolling. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why I have such a good relationship. No, I'm just kidding. Um, that wow. is so fascinating. I, I want to, you said so many things that I want to touch on. Um, it sounded like you were saying you sometimes feel constrained to just the four panels. I don't know. I was a big Calvin and Hobbes fan growing up. Like, do you mm -hmm. ever like try to mix up like this is more than four panels um do you feel like you can play with your formats or that yes. just the nature of instagram you have to keep it as it is the only limitation on instagram and twitter right now is how they crop images when you're scrolling because you can't always control where the image is cropped like say i have a really tall portrait of myself sometimes like i guess algorithm algorithmically they can stop the crop on the face now uh, but not they don't always stop it where you want it to be stopped so that when the person's scrolling they'll only see my man tits for example <laughs> but what i want them to notice is my eyes mm -hmm. my eyes um but yeah there's all kinds of uh little tricks you can do as far as size it doesn't always have to be four, four panels with me not at all um but i am constrained by uh, the cropping and what happens because a lot of people just see these on their phone screen mm -hmm. and it sucks that they have to zoom in to read the comics but that's kind of a concession i've had to make people are zooming in to look at boobs everyone's zooming in sure. all day every day yeah and but you have to sort of i've realized the creators both of us are creators we have to sort of uh, cater our content to the platform that we're publishing on so I, I don't use TikTok, but a lot of comedians might use TikTok to do like 10 second long joke videos or skits or something. Mm -hmm. And that gets more engagement because people, when they're on TikTok, they want a snack. When I'm on <laughs> Twitter, I just want like a brain snack for maybe two minutes and then I'm done with Twitter for a few hours. Or I might spend a half hour on it. Right. Um, so we kind of have to look at the science of the platforms that we're publishing on and see how do I consume content? How do others consume content? And how do I get that precious attention as they're scrolling? How do I make them stop and pay attention? Uh, so that's that's kind wow. of the business we're in. And like, how could how could uh, SVA have taught you that? This is an education you can only get by just, <laughs> well, just no, putting in years on social media. 
I would love to teach at SVA, but there's no way they would hire me. But why not? Um, oh, my reputation. No, you don't think uh, hyper liberal and all that stuff. I still think. Uh, isn't that sad, though, that just being good at something is, like, not enough to get a job? Yeah, maybe if you were, like, trans, if you could transition, that would help. Well, I mean, yeah, I can make a million jokes about that. But, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the classic argument of uh, I'm overqualified, but I don't have the right body. Uh, and anyone can make that argument. They could say I'm qualified, but I have the wrong skin color or the person just didn't like me or some other – you know, it's happened to me where like, well, you'll see an instance of someone who definitely does. I don't, I don't like to be proudful, but like they, they definitely were not as good at drawing as me. And they got a job that I should have gotten, let's say. I'm like, well, why did they get it? Because they checked more uh, things on the list, let's say. But now my reputation is such that I think there's been enough slander about me that if anyone researched me for a little bit online, they would be too hesitant like i still get artists who say hey love your stuff i can't publicly say i like your stuff because i'll have job problems <sighs> which is a shame i, I understand I, it though yeah yeah i get mad at them but it's like i don't have the right to be too mad of like i guess i wouldn't lose my job either but it's like if there were just more of you we wouldn't have this problem just come out and say what you feel like the pilots at the 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 airport, I don't remember what company All was. the sick pilots, yeah. Sure, just all of you come out and say, look how many of us there are. You will not screw us because of our political or personal beliefs. We're here to do work. Uh, but I right. decided to, I guess it's like, I'm also a Peterson fan, but like he says things basically, uh, you have to set your sights on a goal and think about the hell behind you if you don't go for that goal. So it's like, yes, that is so Peterson, right? Like it's, yeah. it's hard. You have to choose your heart. Like it's hard to not pursue your dreams. It is also hard to pursue your dreams. So which sure. is the hard that you can live with? Yeah. And deciding to come out and face cancel culture as a creator, it's like the forest behind us is burning down. Like, all right, so you're a comedian. I see a lot of like high level high level comedians being fucking pussies because they don't have the guts to like do a, a college they were saying like oh i don't want to get canceled or what you're going to lose your million dollar house what are you going to lose exactly you're the people that can defend us smaller people you have more to lose but you have more clout than we do and more then, savings <laughs> sure yeah. so i don't mean to get too mad and heated at them but it's like all right so us with nothing or i'll speak for myself me with very little I also have nothing. <laughs> well uh, relatively nothing let's say right we're mm -hmm. we're kind of smaller creators right maybe but we have very little to lose but we have a lot to gain so maybe if we were in the position to defend a bigger castle we wouldn't have the guts to say half the things we do online now where i'll draw strips that are ultra offensive now because what am i going to get canceled again what are you going to do to me uh i'll just go back to 200 followers and work my way back up again um so it's I kind decided, of freeing though isn't it like you yeah whether you're consciously or not like you've grown to a creator that like puts out work that is very bold and brave and not giving a fuck and says what needs to be said. Yeah. And the crazy thing is I could go so much harder, but I'm also trying to like find the line between uh, like a lot of dark stuff. Like I drew a strip like that where there was a guillotine mm -hmm. chopping off some woman's head in the uh, French revolution or something. And someone goes, Oh man, I hope, it, when I hope the government stops this, stops this before it gets out of hand or something, or another woman's getting uh, escorted into a camp and the, there's a guard and stuff. And she's like, oh man, when I get home, I'm going to tweet about this so hard. I'm like I could draw so many <laughs> worse things with the mm -hmm. same punchline. Um, but George, what if you did like, um, like a Patreon or something like a paywall thing where like, if you want to see like my intense line of work, like yeah. go and for whatever, five dollars a month, like okay, you you now expect a certain level of, of intensity or dark humor or whatever or just truth, mm -hmm. and that's a way to kind of okay for the people that do like love you and want to see more and want to see your range in that way, you know, you can offer it to them. But I can understand too, like oh, you know, you don't want to be judged for your extreme work. It's really hard because I know that anything I post can be reposted anywhere, and I can't stop it. 
So I even work with piracy. Like I know there's pirates out there where I just like, look, I know you can just copy and paste all my art anywhere. So I'll just put up all my stuff for free anyway. And I'll just ask everyone, hey, if you like my stuff, throw me a buck once in a while if you have a buck to throw at me. Uh, it's just the reality of the internet. So if I if yeah, I upload like dark nudes. stuff, mm-hmm. yeah, because I can, I have drawn nudes and stuff like that book, Bad Dreams, that I was telling you about. There's a lot of nudity and stuff, but it's tasteful. But it doesn't matter if it wasn't tasteful either. Um, I know it's going to get posted again somewhere uh, eventually. So it has to be something that I'm proud of. Like there's an artist named Frank Frazetta who I admire a lot. Um, there, if I do nudes or something like that, I would want it to be artsy enough that people would say, ah, it's, it's kind of over the line, but it's also really cool. And it tells me a lot about myself or it tells a good story. Uh, there's a playful character I have named Officer Runt, for example, who's like this petite, sexy cop thing. But like the <laughs> joke joke is that she completely sucks at her job or she's unqualified. Like, Oh, so she's a female cop. <laughs> Got it. Well, all right. So the joke would have been that like, hey, I'm going to go and fight and my father and my brothers are all cops and I'm going to be a cop too. officer run on the job. And then she gets out there in the middle of the riots. This was last year. And then she's like this little uh, cartoon nugget character and completely mm-hmm. overwhelmed. And the joke is like she's completely overwhelmed. And it's fun. And uh, I made a like a pinup calendar of her last year. Oh, wow. A lot of people liked it. But yeah, that that's that kind of thing where they're like saying, hey, can you draw like nudes of her? And I'm like, mm. yes and no. Because also, I, I'm talking too much, but like with, with let's say, the art of seduction, right? Part of the, uh, the thing that makes it so attractive in the first place is the pursuit, but not the uh, attainment of the thing that you desire. So if you give the people what they want, exactly what they want, they'll be satisfied and then they won't come back. So mm. it, a lot of it is a sort of, I hate to use the word titillation, but it's like a little carrot on the stick. Hey, do you want to see a little more? Come back next month. You know, just give them a little more. You sound um, like an OnlyFans chick. You really figured it out, George. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually have thought of starting, I shouldn't say this because someone's going to steal it. I was going to do an OnlyFans as a character and then like see what happens. But I don't have time right That's now. That's cute. It yeah. would have been fun. Like it's, it's I'm not going to say too much, but I, I still to, might do it. You should. Uh, it's, it, it's like, yeah, like put the idea down, chew on it for a while. I'm going to get to some of these super chats yeah. from random Mick Randerson. Hey, Chrissy, I posted a link to George's Twitter with his Reddit comics in the chat. Oh, I didn't see that. And sometimes the chat scrolls past uh, your guys' comments. So shoot, I want to see that. Yeah, I was going to ask you before, George, like if, uh, like, what was your Reddit comic that got you into such hot water? But I think you described it. I'll, uh, it won't matter, but I can send it to you on Twitter. <laughs> okay. Um, super chat from Haya Busta Paul. Just wanted to reward George and Chrissy for their portrayals of Jen Saki. George's caricature of Saki is a fine example of the condescending dim. Definitely. Yeah, I don't like that lady. I don't either. It's, it's really interesting to have to do an impression of somebody that you think sucks and who isn't funny and nothing she says is funny. So you're like, okay, I have to, and maybe part of the impression is to like, let it slip that she's horny or corny or like likes puns. And she just can't express herself when she's, you know, representing the white house. Um, It's just like dead. And it's amazing. Like, you know, how much I've gotten out of this $20 wig. But yeah, I love your, I love, like the first thing I, I remember the first Kamala um, strip I saw that you did was like the enjoy the long weekend and just her face, like the dumb smile. I laughed so hard because you really captured her, her, her like cool, aloof kind of essence, like really clueless. And it's, it's what what a a lot of people are feeling. Yeah. How many years do you think it'll be before she's the president? look who it is it's little chad for 10 thanks little chad wow he What's used up? up all his allowance for this glad to see <laughs> glad to send some support to a couple of my favorite creators oh love you little chad man i used to do a comic strip with a girlfriend of mine this was like years ago it's probably like 2008 and uh, i she kind of like would give me the ideas and i would draw it and i really loved it and there's definitely like another world where i am doing more art stuff than like 
comedy. It's really, I don't know, it'd be hard to do both, but I miss it. Well, I mean, they are discipline wise. You can draw, I don't want to tell you what to do, but tell me what you to can do. draw some really, how do I put this? With your sense of humor, the writing is better and more important than the drawing. So even if you quote draw badly, I think your strips can do very well already. Like you're on all the platforms anyway. So if you draw a shitty strip on a napkin or something, <laughs> I think you're in a good position. If you know how to draw, you should do it. I'm okay. not telling you what to do, but you should consider it. You're like, but don't get too good. No, it's okay. No, I also believe I, that like there's no there's no one who's competing with you. You know, like no who not no one else is doing this I, I in want, your voice in this way. I don't way. even believe in competition though. I want to be super open about that. I want yeah. competition, but I also I want as many people to be in this pool as possible. Uh, and there's no pride in me saying like there's other people who are way better than me, and that's okay. Uh, I just want to be yeah. part of the party, you know. Yeah. Man, your stuff is so good. Do you feel like, um, was it a conscious decision to like use your real name? I know you also go by G Prime, but do you feel like, like I want to talk about like using a moniker or using like a stage name or whatever. Do you feel yeah. like you can get away with more or different things when your actual name and face is not behind your On art? one hand, yeah, it's good because it makes me behave. Um, and then there are instances where let's say I would be tempted to type something, but if if people knew that I said that, I would not be pleased or it would affect other people in my life that I wouldn't want it to. So in one way, it's it's that kind of comedy uh, leash that it keeps you on where tell a joke that you can repeat to almost anybody. And that means it's got a broad appeal. Whereas if you told a very specific joke to only a few people that would laugh, they'll like it. But, uh, you won't get that broad uh, I don't know. What am I yeah. trying to say? Like the broad using, appeal. Yeah. And also using my real name. Like I've been, I've never used a pen name. So I've had, I have a library of work going back, say 10, 15 years of comics. Some of them are pretty shitty. Most of them are. But uh, as I got older, I became more and more proud of them. And I still want people to read those. So I'm very proud of my name and I want people to know my name. And even if they don't like some of my stuff, <laughs> I still want them to be able to look me up and I don't want to be ashamed of signing my name to something. Yeah. Uh, even if like, say something's inappropriate, like that one. That you're showing right there. Like, <laughs> this makes you feel like this really is fucked up, but um, I wouldn't want to draw anything that I don't want to put my name on. Cause then to me, it's like I wasted my time. And with this, you notice this first and then you see the title and you're like, that's perfect. It's like, this is the punchline. Uh, if this is a they whole would, bit, they would print that sort of thing, honestly. Mm -hmm. And I, I have a secret grudge, not a secret grudge at all, actually, against the New Yorker and all those fucked up magazines of like, I could never get work with you guys. So, hey, I'm more popular than all of your creators combined now. What do you yep. think of that? But uh, not to swing salty. dick or anything. I think it's it's not nice to do that. But I, I think it. it's really, well, I just think it's weird that like, hey, maybe I'm making stuff that people want to see and your magazine sucks dick. And mm -hmm. uh, maybe your magazine sucks and I never should have wanted to be one of you anyways, because. Uh, but when you're know. when you're younger, when you're growing up, going through school, just finding your create, get your getting your creative wings out from under you like there. I can't think of any great examples of like independent comics, or like comedians. Um, mm. It was only just who was on SNL who is on late night, who is on a comedy central special. And not even like, this is just in my twenties. Cause I started stand up at 26 mm -hmm. before that. I was like doing improv with like the mentally ill theater kids, but you know, you just, you don't see an example. This has only been something that's been able to happen in the last few years that you can completely forge your own path. You don't need to kiss the ass of the comedy central booker or this Store one show owners. in Brooklyn. Who knows a guy who knows a guy who can get you on Fallon. Yeah. Um, and it, and I wonder if the same is just true of cartoonists. Like, Yeah, I mean, social media and the internet changed everything, right? It's back in the day, there were all these gatekeepers. So we could use comedy as an example, right? You would have to go through an agent, and it's very much of uh, you know people who know people. And that also created situations like uh, you would have to do favors for some people maybe, uh, or you would have to do all kinds of shady shit to climb the ladder or 
just all these people stood between you and the potential audience whereas social media just says hey if one person says this is share worthy then everyone they follow will now see your stuff and it creates a chain reaction so as much as i don't like how twitter is managed i like the formula of you can almost get free advertising on the whole world's platforms mm. So when a big creator will retweet my comic or something, completely, I didn't ask them to, they did it because they liked it. That's extremely A, flattering, and B, it's huge for me business-wise because I now have access for just a second to their audience. And yeah. all creators, if when this goes up, this interview, <laughs> I'll post it to my people and then they will be exposed to your stuff. And then if they like your stuff, they'll see more of it. So it creates a beautiful networking chain reaction kind of thing where it's word of mouth. And I've always said that's the best form of advertisement because it's not, uh, it's the difference of like, if someone asks for a favor, that sucks where it's like, hey, can you retweet this? I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> but, but if they say something that's retweet worthy, yes, I will retweet it because I enjoyed it and I want other people to see it. So that's, you want and to be it also, to it sounds, it's not out of character for you. Like retweets are kind of, for me, it's like, okay, this is something I would say, or this is like in line with how I think and it's yeah. funny, or this is a different angle of something I believe in. Yeah. I mean, but I that's social it. media in a nutshell, mm -hmm. but yeah, as a comedian, that's really what I would think that's the ladder for a comedian is knowing the right, knowing a lot of people, who want to share your stuff around with their audience and you all share this giant pool of the same audience and and you don't have to go through uh, business people I, I have a grudge against business people in general but yeah same want to have to go through an agent or uh store owners or comedy central or something like that or in my case newspapers it's like no i have an audience they want my stuff that's why rogan blew up the internet with his podcast for instance we don't have to go through any third parties to get access to the coolest conversations online. Um, so they proved creators like him proved that it's just creators and audiences and everyone else is a middleman. As yeah. As I really love the way he stuck it to Gupta like that. I mean, everyone's seen those clips going yeah. viral. I was like, yes, he's like not <laughs> holding back. He would not let it go. The best was like when you heard him say dude for the first time, that first dude, he's like, dude, like that, that's that was when I was so, like, he's not letting this go. Yes. Yeah. That reminded me of like, maybe it's a Northeast thing, but I'm like, he's talking just like we do where when you're arguing with someone from the Northeast, they don't let it go. Like, no, go back to what you were saying before. Don't try to, and the Gupta, like, I don't like him very much, but like, he's trying to weasel his way out of it, trying to politic his way out of it. But let's, we'll go back to that in a second. We'll circle back. But let me talk about this other thing first so you can forget. Distract. Like, no, no, no. Yeah. But again, Rogan's, technique. Mm -hmm. yeah, Rogan's a fighter. So he knows to, when they try to slip out of the corner, no, you follow yep, them. Because he sees a weak point and he's like, why don't I just turn so yeah. that this side is stronger? You can hit this side. And he's like, no, I'm yeah, going to go right here. It's really admirable. I'm not a very aggressive person like that uh, in real life, but um, you can see, I don't want to name, well, he fought with another uh, comedian very famously a few years ago. Uh, and he was also very, I don't want to say names out of respect, but like there was a certain uh, joke thief comedian that he was fighting with, you know? Was it Amy Schumer? Carlos Mencia. Oh yeah, everyone knows that. That's okay. come on. Yeah. That's I don't, like, I don't know what the uh, the the everyone, protocol. Is. People who are not even comedy people know that. So right. so that's at, no big deal. His younger self was very much like go and get him. I'm, I, he he would jump on stage and go after Mencia, but I think older Rogan wouldn't do that so much. But it was interesting to see that younger Rogan come out yesterday. Uh, yeah, but that's again, that's really cool, and I love that like. He is such a perfect example of how like fame, success, everything being elevated doesn't change who you are. It doesn't change how he speaks. He's not like polishing up more because he makes more money now and has more eyes on him. Yeah. And he so said, he like, doesn't, Dude. yeah, the, the trick for him, he said, uh, is that he doesn't think about it. And that's probably the best thing. Like for a human being, I don't think we're built princes and kings and nobles. You know, they get there's a stereotype of how they're full of themselves. I don't think humans are built to be 
treated like royalty. And that's why a lot of them go crazy and uh, get really puffed up and big heads and proudful. And we're, we're not meant to be exalted, I don't think. Hmm. Um, but then you get a guy like him who keeps it, keeps it real. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I respect that a lot. Um, and it's a kind of attitude. Humility is a generally good attitude to adopt. Again, we're Peterson fans, so he talks about that all the time. Mm-hmm. And I grew up in a religious background, too, so pride was always looked down upon, you know. What were you raised as? I would just say a general Protestant, uh, slightly evangelical Baptist, um, non-denominational, I suppose. So yeah. It's pretty, pretty vanilla Christian. And I, I, was, I was, yeah. Oh, go on. <laughs> I was, okay. I was raised Methodist and okay. that is, to me, that is like the lightest of the light. Like I had a blast. Like we were, all I remember mostly are like egg hunts. <laughs> like they'd fill these garbage bags up with Easter grass. And then we like, like, you'd be like, you know, bear, digging through like a Victoria's Secret sale. Oh, eggs. And then it was, ho- you know, it was Halloween, co- all cool holiday stuff. And then like, yeah. there was like the kids, uh, the kids time. And it was like race to the verse. And they were like, you know, you're like, oh, there's cool older kids. And then I sang in the choir. All three of us sang in the choir. My brother like leaned back, set his whole head on fire. Like I have very positive church memories. That's and good. and I would always like my grandma was very religious she had like a hundred bibles which growing up i would make fun of her for and now i'm like asking my sister i'm like oh do we have any like i wish i had now i'm like wanting to order a bible like that's where i'm at i'm like i'm gonna read the bible now (laughs) i I actually used to collect them if you want one uh really oh my god is all the different translations yeah i was very hard into uh in my 20s i wanted to be a preacher actually what Um, that's so cool you know it's I could have pushed it further, but I kind of felt my faith. Uh, how do I put this? It wouldn't, it, it's like, I don't want to be crass either. Be crass. This isn't, this is my pod. Uh, no, I don't want to put it this way, but let's put it this way. It's, it wouldn't have been genuine if I kept telling people, this is what the Bible says, even if I personally am kind of like, but does it though? I don't know. It's like, I, I don't have reasons to doubt it. Like I'm agnostic now, I say. I have zero disrespect for people of faith and I, you know, I wish I had more. But for me, it was just, I don't have it. Like when I was praying, I would pray all the time and I'm like, are you, is anyone really listening? I don't know. Like, so I would like go on walks and kind of, I would get more better spiritual time out, out on a hike or on a drive. And yeah. it still is the case for me. Like I'll take afternoons off sometime and go for like a two hour drive for no reason. And now like the leaves are turning colors up in our area. Right. And like, I'll be up in, uh, uh, let's say up bottom, but upstate New York for me, where like, there's just these giant rolling hills and mountains and you could see trees forever and they're all changing colors and you put, get some nice music and some coffee and for me yeah. that's my spiritual time well god is in everything the music that you hear and, and sometimes you don't you're not as connected like inside your room inside four walls like it helps to get out in nature it helps to go listen to music some people really need to get near water some yeah it's funny you know yeah because biblically speaking i don't want to get too into it if it's boring but you know like jesus would say like when you pray close your room and do it privately in the sense of don't don't show it off so when i see preachers like praying like i'm gonna pray in front of everybody and oh look how spiritual i am there are verses I like those people who take out the mats in public and pray in front of them <laughs> right or, or like the, the get back in your uber fake, now <laughs> yeah there's all these fake preachers that like go into public things and like oh lord and all that stuff and but anyway so for me it's it's a very private thing and like i love art and creativity and all that stuff and one could argue that uh, the divine manifests itself through all forms of like say beauty and art and creation and we're just kind of replaying this this programming that we have to create again peterson order out of chaos what does that even mean? It's weird. But like the universe itself is just this stew of elements and compounds and all that stuff. But we are builders and life itself has been built somehow. And it's so amazing to think about. 
And, you know, I don't do drugs, but it's like, I feel like I am sometimes when I think about how complex life is and all that stuff. And I'm like, but that's why I love art. It's like, I have this mess of pixels in front of me. And if I spend a few hours massaging the pixels around, a picture comes out that I can now communicate to other brains, whatever a brain is. And we can kind of think about something for a little bit. It's weird yeah. and beautiful. It is. You can say, yeah. you can say things through your comics that can't be said in a joke and there are things that can be said in a joke that can't be said that can't be drawn out and sometimes i get ideas for jokes and i'm like no this wouldn't translate like but this would make a great cartoon so you should draw it honestly like yeah. would you be willing to do some and just show like privately a few people maybe just I'd be you <laughs> even if it was stick figures no because really there's a famous webcomic called xkcd yes i remember that that was huge like it kicked ass it was just ago. stick figures mm -hmm. so what's to say that you can't do something similar maybe i'll think about I think, it i think you should try it would add to your brand put it that way okay <laughs> okay I just, I want more people to draw. So I'm trying to convert oh, you. Oh, you know, it like speaks to like very much a little kid part of me because I would, I have said this on other pods, but like we'd be sitting in church and they hand out the prayer forms and you're supposed to be like, um, let's think of Mildred uh, during this time, whatever. She She's mm -hmm. losing a leg or something. And I would just draw a picture of like the pastor jumping off the roof of the, of the church or I draw <laughs> like, like just little yeah. sheep, you know, like walking up to Jesus or something. Yeah. And, uh, then my grandma would confiscate them. But I, you know, I was a studio art minor in college. I really, it was a real love of mine. I'll and I took this, I took this like installation art class and I like ended up hanging up something up high and it broke a light. And my dumb teacher, she was such a con, she gave me like a C for the class. And I was like, so like, I don't get C's in art. And then I switched to women's studies, which was a mistake. Uh -oh. I think uh, as we get older and we become adults, we become too self-conscious. True. So we you judge, have to create we, like a child. We prejudge ourselves, though. Mm -hmm. Like this isn't anything special, but like a family member made these for me. Just Wait, little I'm going to do of solo dust. layout. You know. Hold it up again. Are you in Nothing a bathroom? Special. Are you in a steam room? No, that's a little. Never mind. Yeah, I've been taking a shift. <laughs> I like it. Hold it up again. <laughs> Let me see it. Just these little drawings. That's I have folders cute. and folders of these. Okay, so they're uh -huh. nothing special, right? But to me, they're like my treasures. I want to be buried with them. I have folders and folders of these, and I love them to death. And I want everyone to draw because what happens when a person, digital doesn't give you this magic, but when someone hands you a sheet of paper that they've personally touched and drawn something on, there's a certain piece of like their spirit in it. And to me, it's so magical and wonderful. So. At risk of sounding fuddy-duddy or whatever, like I, I think it's some of the greatest treasures in the world is something that is handmade like that. Yeah, it's and like uh, like mixtapes were so special. Like, yeah, I'm still a big card person. I love like it was just how we were brought up, like getting, receiving. Like I would make my own cards. They same, took same. forever, but um, yeah. But and my mom, sense. my mom, like I would make Christmas cards for everyone in the family. My mom loved them so much she would like put them inside the tree. So oh, I wish I, I wish I could like, I will. It's like, you just have to dedicate time to doing it. Yeah. Time is the biggest problem, but uh, it means way more than someone goes to the store and just picks out a card, you know? Oh yeah. Even if it sucks, the drawing sucks. Like once I'll tell this, it's not a story, but my grandma once drew a, a little happy face or something. Cause she wanted to support me in my drawing and stuff. It made me cry when I was little. It's Aww. like, because, because it was so sweet and thoughtful, but uh, a card that you buy at the store will never do that. But like, I have that card still. Yeah. You know? It's like, she touched this. She made this. She touched it with her little grandma hands. <laughs> her little yeah. angry grandma, Greek grandma hands. Yeah. You're like, why yeah. does this smell like feta? Um, <laughs> George, it was so great yeah. to have you on. I have to have you back because. Oh, I'd love to anytime. Talking, talking art um, stuff. Tell people where they right. can find you and follow you and all that okay. good stuff. All right. Well, I'm on Instagram and Twitter mostly uh, these days. So I'm at G prime 85 on both platforms. And if you want to support me, I'm on Patreon, which is studio NJ. So patreon.com slash studio NJ. And I also have an Etsy shop, which is also called studio NJ, uh, where you can buy like my books, which I actually print from home. If, if that means anything to anybody, 
so I, I have a background in printing, so I. Uh, you touch them hand. with your. I touch them hand. with my disgusting, greasy hands. <laughs> and some of the books fall apart, but that means mm -hmm. it's your book. It's a special book, and uh, I don't know. Maybe that means something to somebody. But um, yeah, it does. Patreon's the best way to support me, but Etsy is also very good. Uh, and next year, I'll I'll get my store professionally done and stuff. I'm still kind of seat of my pants figuring it out. Awesome. Yeah. George, but I'd love to come back. This was a lot of fun. I really want to ask you more questions. I know stuff, we stuff. barely scratched the surface. It was a lot. I'm going to have you back. This was great. Everyone follow George. Love you guys. Thanks for the chats. Thanks for the questions until next time. Bye. Cause <laughs> dreams.